Hi, Jim Stein here with Aquarium Design. You probably know me as the LA Fish Guy. I'm standing in front of my 180 gallon reef tank and as many of you know, reef tanks as well as fish tanks have issues with hitchhikers or parasites. In the case of fish, it might be flukes that climb on top of the fish and deteriorate the fish's body, climb all over the eyes and such. In the case of corals, they come in with the corals and they aren't necessarily detrimental to the coral, but eventually their population gets out of control. I've got some in here that are literally covered with the little um, flukes in there. Uh, what I'm going to try today is uh, Blue Lights product, um, Flatworm RX. Uh, I've done a little bit of research on the internet, and it does indicate that maybe the dosage is a little on the cautious side, and it's probably going to take more than one application. The thing that you need to be aware of is you want to make sure you're prepared because what's going to happen is you're basically trying to kill the flatworms and in the process as they expire they're going to release a toxin into the water. So we want to be prepared not only to have our protein skimmer uh, fine tuned but we want to have some activated carbon because they may taint the water with whatever toxin they release and at the same time we probably want to consider doing a fairly good size water change once we're done to kind of get everything under control. Now the product comes in a powdered form and we need to add some water to the container inside here, shake it up real good. We're going to do it by the recommended dosage on the box. I've watched a few videos on the internet and they've indicated it probably is going to take a lot more, but let's just try the cautious approach first. So as I mentioned, this is my own reef tank. It's 180 gallons. It's doing fairly well. Uh, I've got a few corals here that kind of show some of the flukes that are getting inside there. Some of them are not real obvious on there. Um, and yet in other places, such as this soft coral here, they're very obvious. Uh, if we set the camera here for a little bit, you can see them moving around on there. And all those little dots are not psychedelic coloration to the coral. Those are actually flatworms inside there. And so our goal today is to try to eliminate as many as possible. Uh, I've got a coral that's over here on the other side, and to a minor degree, it doesn't look real obvious, but I'm going to tap that coral in a little bit. Those polyps are going to close, and you're going to see that it's pretty much just covered with them. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's not detrimental to the coral. They're not harming the coral. They just don't look that attractive. And at the same time, as an aquarium service person, I'm also going to be selling corals to customers. And if I were to put any of those corals in this tank, they could become um, populated by the flatworms, and I could be introducing them into the customer's tank. And I'd really rather, tr rather try not to do that. So to a minor degree, you can see that the coral's doing real well. It's one of those fluorescent green tip uh, leather corals. I'm going to go in here, and I'm just going to bump the coral a little bit to get it to close up. I see all the little polyps are beginning to close up on there. And all those little dots, those are all flatworms. They're living on that coral, probably feeding on the mucus or whatever on the coral. Again, it's not detrimental to the coral, but it doesn't look good, and it could spread to other corals that may ultimately end up going into my customers' tanks and that I don't want to do. So before we get too far along here, uh, this being my uh, filter sump down below and that being the protein skimmer, it's a uh, early model Euro Reef brand protein skimmer. Uh, those fans are my uh, alternative to an aquarium chiller. Uh, it's just an open sump. Uh, those are the hog algae scrubbers there. And then there's a, a micron sock over on that end uh, that traps particles as it comes into the sump. Uh, there is a um, 
Reef Breeders DC operated pump in the sump itself, sending water back up into the tank. But my point is, we want to go ahead and make sure that that protein skimmer is clean uh, and ready to uh, work as well as it can. So I've gone through, I've emptied the cup, I've cleaned it, you can see it's beginning to uh, start to operate again. That would be normal uh, frothing from the protein skimmer. I've done nothing uh, to the tank as far as the flatworm uh, RX is concerned. And so we're just prepared. Uh, and then I've also got some activated carbon. Uh, Blue Life makes some. Uh, we can put that into the system once we're done and want to try to get the uh, tint or tainted uh, water out of the system. So again, there's the uh, flatworms on that um, leather coral there. Uh, there are a few on that uh, green nephia. Uh, down here is a uh, finger coral and you can see a few of them on there. Uh, and of course, definitely a number of them uh, on that finger coral as well. Uh, you've got a relatively happy rose anemones in the tank, uh, a few SPS corals, some uh, lobophilias in there, uh, and a bunch of uh, zoanthids as well as some uh, tabastria. So the product arrives with a small little bottle. There's some uh, powder inside there and the directions say that what we want to do is um, fill it up with water and bring it up to that line that's on there. So I'm going to get some RO water put in here. We're going to shake that up real good and we're going to make a little bit of a slurry. So with the RO water, the product also comes with a little uh, dripper cap. So we want to put that in position. Let's go ahead and put the cap on and then start shaking it real good. GHL is widely recognized for the most reliable and future-proof aquarium controllers, dosers, and aquarium LED lighting on the market. Designed and manufactured in Germany, all GHL products are built with the highest quality and standards. The GHL Profilux 4 raises the bar to a whole new level. Featuring built-in Wi-Fi, the Profilux 4 can be connected to your network wirelessly and be monitored and controlled from anywhere. With integrated ports for temperature, pH, ORP, conductivity, you can monitor virtually anything. Built-in expansion ports and optional flow sensors allow the Profilux 4 to scale to meet the needs of even the most advanced aquarium installations without the need for additional add-on modules. The new GHL Doser 2.1 takes dosing to the extreme with integrated Wi-Fi for wireless management. It includes inputs for level sensors, a temperature probe, and an output for a magnetic stirrer, making it an ideal solution for everything from dosing, automatic top-off, automated water changes, and even automated feeding. The GHL Mitras are the most powerful and flexible LEDs in their class. The 7206's built-in wireless control makes for fast and easy setup, while the GHL Light Composer allows users to easily set up their spectrum and lighting schedule. Six individual LED clusters provide the industry's best blending of LED channels while also providing the best spread. Nine channels of control allow you to tailor your lighting scheme to meet the needs of even the most difficult to keep corals while also bringing out colors in corals and fish that would otherwise remain unseen. All GHL products can be controlled via the GHL Control Center application as well as the My GHL Cloud interface, allowing for monitoring, control, and management from anywhere via an internet connection. The unique interface eliminates the need for coding while providing advanced programming functionality unrivaled by the competition. If you're looking for the best controllers, dosers, and lighting on the market, then GHL has a product to fit your needs. For more information, visit AquariumComputer.com. Aquarium LED mounts manufactures revolutionary articulating mounts for the most popular LED fixtures and pendants. Their unique patent-pending design allows for full articulation of the light. You can rotate the fixture 360 degrees while also tilting it in any direction in order to maximize coverage while reducing shadowing and light bleed onto the viewing panels. They are designed to be used in conjunction with canopies, light racks, and light bars, but can also be adapted for use with light mount arms. 
the kit includes all the hardware needed to attach to your favorite LED fixtures. Aquarium LED mounts offers articulating mounts for many popular fixtures, such as the GHL Mitra's LX series, Kessel 350, Kessel 360, and AP700 fixtures, as well as Ecotex Radeon, AI Hydra 52, and AI Soul fixtures. Custom mounting adapters for other fixtures can be produced upon request. For more information, check out AquariumLEDMounts.com. Hi there, my name's Jim Stein, and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium, and the third is MyFishTank.com. I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available. And the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be. That's MyFishTank.com. So if you read the instructions carefully, you'll note that there are two things that are important to be aware of. One is the dosage, and the second one is the frequency that you're going to dose at. The package says four drops per 10 gallons. This being a 180 gallon tank, divide by 10 would be 18 times four would be 36. 72 drops is what I'm supposed to put into the tank. The second thing that it says is don't dose more than once in a 24 hour period. So from what I've read, the dosage might be a little bit on the weak side, but this is my pride and joy. I could take the internet's advice and dose heavier, but I think I'm going to stick with the re recommended dosage to begin with. I can always go back and do additional uh, applications if needed. And at the same time, not everything is always going to eliminate it. It's not magic and it's not a magic bullet. It's going to take some time to eliminate it. If you've got ick or something in your tank, one application doesn't always solve the problem. These parasites, they're fighting for their life, so they're going to struggle to stay alive in there. It does highly recommend going in first and trying to suck out as many as possible. The thing that you do want to be aware of when applying this is you are going to be killing off the flatworms in the tank. They're going to release a toxin into the water that could be harmful to some of the corals, possibly the fish. So again, another reason to not get too carried away with the dosage. And at the same time, we also want to be prepared to put in some activated carbon to take out that color and plan on doing a water change. But the more of them that you can eliminate beforehand, the more effective the medication is going to be to the remaining ones. So the recommended dosage was four drops per 10 gallons. Again, this is a 180 gallon tank, so it would be uh, 30, 72 drops that we're going to put into the tank. So there's 72 drops. Let's see now if anything happens. So if you look closely, there's definitely an increase in the activity uh, of the flukes that are on the corals. So um, we've hit a relatively therapeutic level uh, that is at least irritating the flatworms. And you can definitely see uh, that there is some activity and they're sensing it on there. Now whether it's having a negative effect or they're just uh, enjoying it, jumping up and gobbling it. Um, not exactly sure at the moment, but I would venture to say uh, that we've reached a level right off the bat, and that's unlike what a lot of other people have made comments on on the internet. Um, let's just take a look at this coral down here. Yeah, you can see there's activity there. And over here on that um, uh, green uh, leather coral, you can see there's a uh, definite activity, so uh, it's having an effect, and we have to assume uh, that it's having a, a negative effect. So uh, we're going to sit back and see um, what happens over the uh, course of the next uh, 30 to 60 minutes.
So it's been about an hour since we uh, applied the Flatworm RX. Um, you can see there's still some flatworms on the coral there uh, and they're still pretty active. It's noticeably less than what was on there. Um, this coral here I can't tell if there's less there or not and the polyps are beginning to open up on the uh, green polyp uh, leather coral um, but there appears to be less there uh, I do see a number of little things floating around in the water and some of them look like they could be uh, flatworms that have abandoned themselves the only thing to be honest with you that uh, doesn't appear to be happy is that tube worm who's a little closed up at the moment um, beyond that nothing else really seems to be negatively affected uh, the gargonians are still open uh, I guess I would say the zoanthids the uh, fringe tentacles seem to be a little bit closed at the moment the big green ones anyhow but the anemones other than the lights going down the anemones are acting fine all the fish in the tank are fine I, I have noticed um, you can see there's a flatworm there on the glass and if you look down the side here you can see a few of them that are up on the glass so uh, that's something that's a little bit new um, there is a noticeable amount of them down on the sand moving around and then the other thing that I did notice was the ones that seem to have bailed off the coral are moving around here on the live rock itself the other thing that I did look at and this might be a little hard to see is the protein skimmer but it's not really producing anything of any substance uh, so uh, apparently there's been no ill effect in the tank and yet there has been a noticeable effect to the flatworms that were in the tank now whether it's just irritated them and they've moved away um, or if it is having a negative effect I guess only time will tell. Again, it's only been an hour uh, since I applied the stuff. The lights are going down. And so I will uh, check it tomorrow morning, see how it's doing. I'll plan on doing uh, a water change tomorrow, which will involve vacuuming the sand. Uh, I haven't vacuumed the sand for quite a while, and uh, that's something I need to do anyhow. And So, so far, I my experience at the moment has been pretty positive and the dosage seemed to be right on the spot so uh, I'm glad we stuck with that amount and uh, maybe I end up having to do a second treatment but uh, so far I think it was a uh, uh, positive effect in the tank at the recommended dosage.